Hello and welcome to the OpenMX video tutorial series. In this video we will be discussing latent growth curve analysis. Latent growth curve analysis is a form of longitudinal data analysis. Longitudinal data analysis is usually data for which we have multiple subjects measured at multiple time points, but we only have one, or at least a very few, variables of interest. The goal of a latent growth curve is to understand intra-individual change over time and inter-individual differences in intra-individual change over time. This is a plot of what typical growth curve data looks like. Each line represents one subject, and each subject is measured at a total of five time points. In this case, time point zero refers to the first time point of measurement. Our goal in a latent growth curve analysis is to describe the growth patterns of this data and how variable those growth patterns are. One way to describe this data is with a line. This line has an intercept of 10 and a slope of 2, and it seems to fairly accurately describe our data. But there is also variation around that line which we would like to capture. A latent growth curve can be used to measure all of these parameters. On the left you see a general equation for a latent growth curve. On the right you see the associated path diagram. I, or the latent intercept, is held constant across all of our measured variables. The loadings for this latent variable are all fixed to 1. This creates a constant intercept value for all variables in the model. The loadings of the second latent variable, s, are all fixed to have a linear relationship to one another. This creates a measurement of a latent linear slope value. Here is the path diagram in relation to the data. The mean of the latent intercept term is the intercept for a line of best fit to our data. The variance of the latent intercept term is a measure of individual differences at the initial time of measurement. The larger this number, the more variation we have about our estimated trend line. The mean of the latent slope variable gives us an estimate of the average slope for all of our data points across all of our time points. The variance of the latent slope term gives us an estimate of how variable the individual slopes are around the average slope. The covariance between these two latent variables gives us an estimate of how related the intercept and slope are. For positive covariance, high intercepts also have high slopes. For negative covariance, high intercepts tend to have lower slopes. Now let's create this model in OpenMX. Let's load OpenMX read in our data, and look at a summary. All of our variables are here, and it appears that the means of these variables are increasing at a fairly linear rate. Now let's set the names of our manifest and latent variables. Notice that our latents are i for intercept and s for slope. And now we can start our model. The data for this model was generated using these parameters, an intercept of 10 and a slope of 2. Let's see if our model can recover these parameters. We'll call this model LGC, and this will be a RAM-type model. Next, we'll define our manifest and latent variables, and then build our A matrix. You will notice that this matrix is entirely fixed. That is, we set all of the loadings from the latent variables to the manifest to be specific loadings. We set each loading from the latent intercept to the manifest variables to be 1. We also fix the loadings from the latent slope to be linearly increasing starting at 0. This allows us to estimate a linear slope. Next, we define our S matrix as seen here. This matrix contains the measurement error of the manifest variables and the variance and covariance of the latent intercept and latent slope. We then specify our F matrix, and then we define the means matrix. Notice that the means of the manifest variables are all set to be zero. The means of the latent variables are, however, freely estimated. We can then set up our covariance expectation and load in our data. Now let's run the model and look at a summary. We can see from the summary that we have the estimated error at each time point, along with the variance of the intercept, 
the variance of the slope, and the covariance between the intercept and the slope terms. We then have our estimates of mean intercept and mean slope. It looks like our model did a good job at recovering the true parameters that generated this data set. In practice, researchers tend to be interested in the slope term. Thus, it would be a good idea to test the significance of this path. As in previous videos, we test the significance of this value by creating a new model where we fix the slope value to be zero. We also may want to test the covariance between the intercept and slope. Just like with the average slope term, we create a new model in which there is no covariance between the intercept and slope terms. We can then run these two models and compare them to our original model with mxCompare. As you can see, both models have a significantly worse likelihood than our original model. This indicates that the average latent slope and the covariance between the latent intercept and latent slope terms are important. This concludes how to create a simple latent growth curve in OpenMX. Thanks for watching.